Looking for a farm brewery? Wait, yeah, that's right. You heard me right, farm brewery. You're gonna wanna check this out. Today I'm on the Northward side of North Brantford, right on 22 at, can you see it? That's right, Stewart's of the Lamb Brewery. All right, come on. Let me show you around. They have food trucks every Thursday through Sunday. And as you can see, tonight was fire in the kitchen pizza night. Delicious. As you're walking in, you'll notice that there's plenty of outdoor seating. They even have heat lamps for when it starts to cool down a little. They also have this really cool spot with picnic tables that overlook the farm. It's gorgeous no matter what type of day it is. Okay now, let's head in. This spot looks perfect. Now, what to get? How about a little tasting? I went for the flight. I mean, how can you go wrong? Four hearty pours of your choice. And how did it taste? So yeah, I clearly enjoyed them all. Okay, so where do you source all the ingredients? Um, so as we're from Brewery, I try sourcing everything that we can from Connecticut, um, as local as we can. If we can't get it from Connecticut, we get it from Massachusetts and New York. Um, a lot of our ingredients, whether we grow ourselves, our fellow farmers in the state, um, the Sour Series, for example, uh, we'll get our strawberries from right on the street from Tabrilli Farms. Uh, we did two batches of that typically every year, 120 pounds of strawberries every batch. Uh, blueberries, we'll get from Zen's Farm up in Enfield. Uh, peaches, all the tree fruits we typically get from Blue Hill Orchard and Wallingford. Uh, our own farm we did, uh, Warmelon Sour just released. We did a whole bit of watermelons in that batch of sour. Um, we do a lot of other stuff on our farm. The honey comes from our library that one of our friends uh, care takes. Um, that's showcased in our honey gold beer. That's a golden ale. We use 10 pounds of honey in every batch of beer. Uh, we'll do um, maple syrup from the sugar on our farm. Uh, we do sweet potatoes and some of our fall winter beers. Uh, a lot of other kinds of uh, pumpkin squash and beers. And uh, grains we source from Connecticut uh, and Massachusetts. Um, there's some things that Connecticut could raise with grains. There's other uh, grains that are sourced from Massachusetts. Uh, crops, we have two friends in New York and Massachusetts. Uh, both family farms, just like our family's farms. Uh, I've gone to, I've worked with them for many years and seen what their operations are. And I feel comfortable using their product in the product we make for our 
customer is going to consume. And that's essentially what it comes down to. How can we make a fresh product that is high quality, that we feel comfortable in our customers to consume on site, enjoy, and have a great time? And the lavender? Where do you get it? Our lavender, so a lot of our herbs we grow ourselves. Mm -hmm. The lavender and the blackberry are their cell service here. The lavender comes right from the garden that's right in the corner here, mm -hmm. um, grown right on the site of the brewery. Um, we also do like habaneros, like our mango habanero. Uh, we'll pick, we'll dry, we'll use the beer. Uh, we'll do a peach Thai chili beer, or the Thai chilies. I, I used to dry, like my, uh, my grandpa used to dry decades ago. Uh, we'll, we'll dry in our greenhouses for five months. We'll store them and then we're ready to make the beer. We'll bring them out and we'll use them in the beer. Uh, for other herbs, we do um, uh, one of our farmhouse ales, which we said. So we use the lemon pavina and lemongrass from the farm right into that. Um, we used to do um, a warm melt mint. Uh, so a combination of like the sour that we had here, the mint right from the farm. Uh, we use lemon balm, rosemary, all different kinds of herbs. Uh, we're right in our greenhouse on the farm right here. Uh, basil, strawberries, um, so many different concoctions. Uh, there's a lot more that I'm trying to source right now. And also, if I can't use it while it's in season, I'll get it from the farmers, let them um, process it, and then throw it into the freezer so that way we can use it in the winter time. Even though it's a growing season, it's still a little bit of product that we're pulling out rather than having to get uh, product from out west or wherever it might come from. While it's nice out, every Sunday from 2 to 5 they have live music, so I had to go back and check out the Furious George Band. And then, once I heard about Trivia Night on Friday nights, I had to go check that out. Sign up start at 7 p.m. and check out all the people. This was even more fun than I expected. I seriously had a blast. <laughs> hey, there you and as you can see, it was Hawaiian night also. Black. Awesome. Awesome. 
So normally I would wear a hoodie underneath mine for medium. Um, for our monthly members, they have a whole month to come in in September. Um, we have samples that we can wear, but they're debating if they're like if they're a large, extra large, whatever it might be. Um, so you can just swing by. Um, if you're not a member yet, you still have 20 spots that you can join. And so, why are you dressed up as Hawaiian tonight? Oh, yes. Um, so, our bartenders want to do the end of the summer uh, party, so they chose Hawaiian theme. So, uh, Jim, they see bartending tonight. Um, it, this was his brainchild, and he wanted all the staff to dress up. So, throughout the whole weekend, our staff is dressing up, um, whether it's Hawaiian shirts, full garb, skirts or like funny shirts, whatever it might be. Uh, we're doing a um, special uh, Hawaiian tropical drink, which is a 50-50 of our watermelon sour and the blue orange cocktail from Two Roads, their daybreaker. Um, so we do like a fun little drink umbrella in that. And then every time you get that cocktail, you get a leg. Um, and then we've had a lot of customers come in, Hawaiian shirts, um, just having fun with it. We dress up uh, the whole outside, palm trees are growing from the farm. Uh, decorations all over. Uh, we like doing this throughout the year. Um, our next fest is going to be our October fest in two weeks, the 15th. We have fun uh, craft fair that night. Um, October, we do every weekend a theme. All of our, uh, our bartenders dress up uh, for whatever that theme might be. And then um, the first full weekend of November is our anniversary weekend. We're going to be doing a prohibition theme for the whole weekend. Awesome. So you do this throughout the year? We do this throughout the year. Uh, something fun for our customers. Uh, we do a costume contest when they like to join and participate with us. Um, we do, um, every now and then, we'll do like kick the keg or um, but last uh, weekend we did Lord of the Rings Game of Thrones trivia. So we had a costume contest. Uh, so we had one of our guys that had the best costume. He won one of our new uh, hoodies. Um, and then uh, throughout the year, we do different fun events like this. Um, so in the winter time, everybody just comes in, or they have the option of going out as well, because the, the heaters are still there. Yeah, so winter time is primarily inside. Um, we do have the heaters outside, um, but it is still open side for the pavilion. Um, but we tell everyone, it's dressed like you're going for a campfire. Uh, we're on the farm, it's that old fashioned scent. Um, if you have one of these jackets, you're, you're going home. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Thank you. And look, I got my own sweatshirt. <laughs> Let's just say it's always a good time. A millennium celebrates the anniversary of how many years? Number eight, who is the lead singer of the Supreme? Number nine, Constantinople was the former name of which Turkish city? And number ten, speaking of turkeys, how many consecutive strikes in bowling equal a turkey? Those are your ten. Please finish them up and hand them to me at this time. This is one of my favorite parts of the brewery. I love how they left these windows in so that we could peek in and look down at the actual brewery. It's pretty cool. And here's a quick peek of the inside to get a closer look of what it looks like on the inside. It's really cool. As you can see, I had a fun time doing this one and it's not over yet. Remember when Alex referenced his family farm? Well, next week we're gonna get a tour of the farm and the farm stand. Now, I don't think I have to say this, but be sure to check them out. And if you're looking to learn a little bit more about North Brantford, subscribe to this channel and give me a ring because I'd love to show you around. I'm Coastal Kim and I'm living the shoreline dream.